The once mighty British Empire was one of the wealthiest colonizers in the world. The sun never sets on the British Empire. During Britain's heyday, this was absolutely true. Throughout its history, the empire was able to invade 90% of the countries around the world. The craziest part is that no one in the entire history of mankind has managed to exert its influence like the Britishers did. 100 years ago, at the peak of its territorial control, the British Empire has control over 1 fourth of the land mass and ruled almost 1 third of the population. During its prime, Britain's control extended far and wide, but the landscape has shifted drastically since then. Present-day Britain paints a starkly different picture. A nation grappling with crises, including economic challenges and widespread protests demanding higher wages. Factors like the post-COVID-19 recovery, escalating commodity prices due to conflicts like the Russia-Ukraine war, and resultant inflation have sparked unrest, leading to a cost-of-living crisis, widespread demonstrations and protests across the UK. It will be difficult for you to imagine that it's the same nation that once ruled the entire world. But how on earth, the nation that once had control over 90% of the land in the entire world throughout its history is might about to collapse. The foundations of the British Empire were laid long before the state of Britain even formally existed. Throughout much of the history, with the control of much smaller kingdoms in Wales and most parts of Ireland, England was the major economic powerhouse in the British Isles. But England was not always had advantage in exploration compared to its other European counterparts, such as Portugal, Spain, and France. The economic policies which allowed the Britain to thrive had all to do with their trade ship fleet and the amount of money they invest in their navy, which allowed them to reach and colonize almost every part of the world. An invasion does not really have to be ordered by the king or queen. Many of the countries that were in British control was not directly invaded by British soldiers, but private armies and mercenaries hired by British businessmen. It was businesses and enterprises that really led the change for British dominance around the world. And usually, these businesses were allowed to do as they pleased with the land they conquered. Just because the government is not the one doing the invasion, it does not mean that the kingdom had no control over the invaded land by businesses. For many years they had the largest and most powerful navy in the world. The British put a ton of resources and manpower into building up their navy and creating the most state-of-the-art ships of the time. The country also had natural and man-made ports that allowed it for easy access to offload goods into the country and launch ships quickly into the Atlantic Ocean. Another advantage that England had large amount of iron, coal, and most importantly, for the navy yoke for building sturdy ships. Since these resources were finite, the need to conquer more land and gathering more resources to fuel the British Empire was a necessity. And to do that, they spent a lot of money to ensure that they had the best fleet of ships in the entire world. During the 16th and 17th centuries, Britain was slowly amassing ships and advancing its naval technology, but was not aggressive about invading new territories. But as already established businessmen started to lay their eyes on the goods coming from other parts of the world, they saw opportunity. The British government also encouraged their citizens to finance their expeditions and set up trade routes. They also provided protection using the Royal Navy. They discovered a lot of new lands. Even though there were people in these new lands, the first instinct for the British merchants was to invade first and worry about the people later. So, the two main driving forces of behind the British invasion of 90% of the countries in the world were a national collaboration to build and improve upon naval ships and the knowledge that there were vast quantities of wealth to be made. Eventually, in the early 1600s, the British had built enough vessels to spread across the globe and invaded every single land that came in their way. They made their colonies in America. They captured almost more than half of the countries in the African continent. They looted the entire Indian subcontinent. The Great British Empire stretched from New Zealand and Australia all the way to America and Canada. Britain ruled over 23% of the world population. This means that almost one out of every four people on the entire planet were affected by Britain in some way during this time. In 1921, at the peak of the empire, the British ruled around a quarter of the land on Earth. As Britain's predominantly white colonies developed economically and socially, they sought to gain political independence from the mother country. Canada was formed into a confederation in 1867 
and granted the right of full self-governance with the exception to international relations. Australia and New Zealand followed similar paths in 1900, becoming newly created dominions of the empire. Ireland also hoped to gain some form of independence from the Britain during this time. Multiple home rule bills were put before the British Parliament, but these were all defeated on the ground that partial Irish independence would pose a threat to the unity of the empire. The threat for the empire would ultimately come from the Germany and outbreak of the First World War in 1914. During the conflict, Britain relied heavily on the empire for importing food, resources, and crucially military support. More than 2.5 million men from Britain's dominions and colonies served in the First World War, with many from Canada, India, Australia, and New Zealand, making the ultimate sacrifice for King and the country. Britain was able to defeat Germany and its Ottoman allies and annexed much of their territory in the Middle East, Africa, and the Pacific. But the peak of the British Empire began to crumble after World War I. The strain of the war, reliance on its colonies, and subsequent conflicts like World War significantly weakened Britain's position. Soon other nations within the empire began to question when they may become independent. But the outbreak of the Second World War in 1939 put a temporary halt on this, as Britain once again turned to the empire for economic, material, and military support. Though ultimately victorious, Britain was bankrupted by the war and was no longer in a position to support its overstretched and questioning colonies. Gradually throughout the 1940s, 50s, 60s, and 70s, the colonies and dominions of the empire were granted their independence from Britain in what was recognized as the wind of change. Almost 400 years of British colonial history came to an end. Perhaps what many see as the final and most symbolic representation of the end of the British Empire came in 1997, when Britain formally handed over Hong Kong to China. Before further moving on, if you have watched this video so far, then please hit the like and subscribe button to support the channel. In the beginning of the 21st century, the economy of the UK performed really well with an average annual GDP growth rate of 2.8% between 2000 and 2007, and the productivity growth was second only to that of United States among the G7. However, during the 2008 global financial crisis, a devastating impact on Britain's economy came about, and in between 2009 and 2022, the country experienced the second slowest productivity growth rate among the G7. The consequence of this lost growth over a decade have been profound, because if Britain's productivity growth had not declined after the global financial crisis, its GDP would be a whole 80% higher than it is actually today. This is due to declining business investment rate in the UK after the financial crisis. And this has left the UK trailing behind its counterparts with comparable economies of their own. After the crisis happened, the British government stepped in to bail out British banks, incurring an estimated cost of £141 billion and exposing itself to liabilities exceeding £1 trillion in the process. At the same time, the government also launched a £31 billion stimulus package, extended unemployment benefits and accelerated capital expenditure to revive the economy. All this was done in a bid to prevent a collapse of the British economy. However, these actions resulted several years of budget deficits and a debt burden that reached approximately 70% of Britain's GDP. After that, the Conservative-led government then introduced austerity measures in 2010 to eliminate budget deficits by reducing government spending across various sectors including the police, road maintenance, libraries, court, social and education sectors. The primary goal of these measures was to cut down the UK's rising deficits. And it did it. But the UK's economy and growth rate remained low even to this day. This also caused high levels of poverty in the Britain. During this time, the unity between England and Scotland was also challenged by an independence vote, in which 45% of the people voted to be separate from the kingdom. Scotland, however, remained part of the kingdom. But support for independence from the kingdom has been growing since the great fallout of 2016. And yes, we are talking about the Brexit vote. The UK voted to leave the EU by 52% to 48%. Most people in England and Wales choose to leave, although capital city London with the majority of Scotland and Northern Ireland voted to stay remain in the EU. But why such a divide? Well, there is no definitive answer to the question. Everybody had their own stance of whether to leave or stay in the Union. But one thing is certain that the economy of UK has struggled more after the Brexit. 
Some of the main factors which led to the referendum are the dissatisfaction towards the economy, high levels of immigrations, political sovereignty, historical and geopolitical factors. Then in 2019, the nation hit hard by COVID-19 pandemic. In 2020, the economy of the UK fell by 9.9%, which was worse in all of G7. The shaking economy of England has also lost its position of being globally fifth largest economy to India, which is a former colony of the empire. Due to Russia-Ukraine war, the challenges of UK quadrupled. Since the nation was heavily reliant on these two nations for its energy needs and food, the surging energy costs, double-digit inflation, the passing of its longest reigning monarch, and the resignation of its shortest serving prime minister has reduced the real household income of the Britishers. This also caused many social challenges. Around 6 million Britishers go without food when hungry due to financial constraints. The education system is also suffering on multiple fronts with school facing financial constraints and a shortage of teachers. UK also used to allocate fewer resources to healthcare compared to equally prosperous nations, which resulted in declining social healthcare system. There are also massive protests going on into the country demanding for higher wages. The UK is also dealing with a cost of living crisis. With the rising unemployment and the economic growth not as much as the current government expected, Birmingham, the second largest and influential city of UK after behind London, has declared bankruptcy. There is a real divide in Britain. And for the people from lower spectrum of the income things became pretty tough, and they are uncertain about their own country's future. As the mighty British Empire faded into history, the UK faces an uncertain future. Its struggle to retain unity and economic stability contrasts sharply with the growth experienced by some former colonies. Notably, Ireland stands out as a neighboring nation that has seen remarkable economic progress, saw massive growth in recent history and became one of the wealthiest nations in the entire world. And if you want to know about how Ireland achieved such a remarkable growth, click on the right video, and I will see you there.